But who wouldn't want it all together? I mean, nobody sets out for this, you guys. Right? Nobody says, oh, I'd love to be a mess. <laughs> and you know, it takes forms. It takes different forms than all of us, right? Sometimes we're smiling, we're acting like we have it all together, and we really don't. None of us has it all together all the time. Come on. And uh, nobody sets out for this, you know. And, but the thing is, the desire that actually can lead to this is actually a really good desire. The desire that can lead to this is a desire. When we, when we want something order and our ducks in a row and we long for beauty and we long to be beautiful ourselves and, and for the beauty around us and to pull our families together and we long for our siblings to get along, we're actually longing for something we know we were made for. You know, you know uh, in the beginning of the Judeo-Christian Bible, in the beginning of Genesis, all people, all people were created to be in relationship with God, the God who is and who initiates beauty and light and truth and life and, and all sorts of good things. We were made to be in relationship with that God. And it was perfect and it was good and it was home. And then that relationship was ruptured when sin and death entered into the world. It was completely ruptured. I want you to think about with me, think about a little girl. Think about a little girl by the fireplace with mom and dad and little jammies and, and a soft blanket around her. She's got a little cup of cocoa and, and little marshmallows in it and she's all cozy and the Christmas lights are on and it's just this, this beautiful cozy picture and I just want you to imagine now with me that she's taken, removed from her home, separated from her parents, kidnapped. Imagine that. And imagine that there's a ransom note left. I mean, what a horrific thing, right? This is bad news, bad news. And that's essentially what happened to all people, to all humanity. We were separated from the God who is light and life and all those good things I mentioned, from our home, our original home. And we, like little children, have been longing to get back there ever since. Ever since. And that's what happened to all humanity, and that's what we continue to long for. But the good news about Christmas is that Jesus Christ came to pay the ransom for every single person across the globe. Now, how did he do that? He paid it with his life. You know, if you've ever watched a movie about a kidnapping, there's lots of them out there. For example, um, Liam Neeson's Taken. If you've ever watched a movie where there's a kidnapping, what you notice is when the protagonist comes on the scene, the main guy, the hero, the one who's going to make it happen, the one who's able, the worthy one, we all breathe a sigh of relief. Phew. When that person comes on the scene, they never get the child back that's been taken, that's been kidnapped. They never get the child back until they go to where the child is, till they go to the dark places, till they go to enemy territory and set the, the child free and bring the child home. There's never been a movie that I've seen that has a kidnapping scene where that hasn't happened. And that's essentially what happens when we think about what this all means, all of this Christmas means, God, God put on skin. Jesus Christ came in the flesh as a baby at Christmas time, came from heaven to earth. And he put on a skin suit and he lived the life we couldn't live despite our very best days. He lived the perfect life. He lived a flawless life the life we could not live. And that endorsed his divinity and it endorsed his worthiness. And then check this out. He went to the cross. He died on a, hor a horrific death. Early Palestine, the Romans created this execution on a cross, a, cru a crucifixion. And he went to the cross and he died so that he could enter into death, so that he could enter into enemy territory and then defeat it by rising from the dead. Life overcame death. Good overcame evil. And that paid the ransom 
for every person, and that opened the way to give us access to God, who is our home. That's what Christmas is all about. Ladies, this baby Jesus was born to die. Jesus is the real heart and life of Christmas. His purpose in coming at Christmas and in living for 33 years was to die. It was his mission. So what do we do with this information? A couple things. Number one, you're sitting here and some of you are like, oh, for Pete's sake, why did she have to bring all this up? It was perfectly nice before all of this Jesus stuff came up. But you know, others of you, and some of you may walk away and go, that was nice, the Jesus stuff, eh, not so much, maybe. But others of you are sitting here going, wait a minute, what? And so I want you to stay with me. Two things, two things that I'd like you to consider. Number one, admit your need. Admit your need. Admit that despite your very best effort on your very best day, you don't have it all wrapped up. You can breathe a sigh of relief about that one, by the way. Admit you don't have it all together. Life can be crazy, right? It has a way of thrilling us and then knocking the wind right out of us, don't you think? I had an aunt who was a multimillionaire, my mother's only sibling. And she used to say to me, her life was a wreck, and she used to say to me, oh, Nancy, I'll come to know Jesus. I'll, I'll come to follow Jesus when, uh, when I get my act together, when, when I get organized, when I... And you know what? About a decade ago, she was still trying to do it on her own. She was still trying to get her act together when with all of her stuff around her and all of her millions around her, she committed suicide. Admit your need. Life is crazy. Our careers can drop out from under our feet, right? People betray us. There's divorce, sickness. Our kids can be troubled or sick. We're looking for that person, that one person who'll love us the rest of our lives, and some of us are still looking, when will I find that one? And it just hasn't happened. Admit your need. Admit that on your very best days, you really don't have it all together. And here's the good thing. You don't have to. You don't have to. Number two, the first one, admit your need. And the second is, receive the gift. Jesus Christ is the gift. He is the gift, all wrapped up. And receiving him means that you say, yes, and thank you to the ransom you paid for my life. It means that you'll say, when he says, in this world, you will have many troubles, but take heart, I have overcome the world. That you say, thank you, I'm following you on that one. He has made a way and he is the way. And you'll follow him and let him lead you home. That's what it means to say yes to the gift. Yes, but I'll tell you this, ladies. He will never force it on anyone. He opens it and he offers it. He is the gift. He opens himself up to you. He offers himself to you. And some of you will say, for me and will walk away thinking it's not for you. It is for you. He is for you. He is the gift. 